Okay, today's topic is sustainability, and I want to explore how Amazon, and in particular AWS, Amazon Web Services, is becoming a more sustainable business and helping other companies to become more sustainable. And to do this, I am joined today by Neil Harris, who is the Sustainability Strategy and Innovation Lead at AWS. Welcome, Neil. Hi, Bernard. It's great to be here. Yeah, so nice to have you with us. Uh, maybe as a very brief overview, can you give us an outline of what, of who AWS is, what you do, just just for anyone who is might who might not have heard of of Amazon Web Services? Uh, I, I will do. Yes, thank you, Bernard. So AWS, um, it stands for Amazon Web Services. Um, it's one of a number of Amazon businesses but we specialize in providing cloud technologies and cloud service capabilities. So for example, we have in the region of 200 different services that we provide our customers. Um, we're a fast growing organization that serves not only public sector and commercial customers, but also startup organizations. Um, we're here to help customers let, you know, benefit from the efficiencies of the cloud but also innovate using cloud technologies so they can be more agile, they can move faster and be more sustainable. Very good. And what, what does your role um, mean? What, what do you do for, for AWS? Uh, I, I feel very, very lucky. Um, so I, I'm actually, um, I'm full-time on sustainability. Um, I lead a program across AWS um, in EMEA, so the European, Middle East and Africa region. Um, really designed to help engage with customers, develop strategies around accelerating sustainability programs using digital technologies in the cloud. So that's what I do. Um, I talk to customers every day uh, and explore ways in which we can do more together. Very good. So why is sustainability important to, to Amazon? Um, my gosh, um, it is an incredibly important topic for us. Um, it's a, you know, we have committed as an organization to be net zero carbon by 2040. So back in September 2019, um, Amazon um, and, uh, and with uh, an NGO called Global Optimism co-founded um, the Climate Pledge. Um, and the Climate Pledge is a program that encourages others to join us, set net zero targets, um, and are specifically to be 10 years ahead of the Paris climate um, commitments. Um, and be net zero by 2040. Mm. Um, so it has a wonderful effect of inviting others um, to go on that decarbonization journey. Um, but for us as well, gives us, um, think of it as like a North Star around our sustainability aspirations. So it inspires all kinds of innovation, specifically focused on the customer. We're an incredibly customer focused organization. Our customers care deeply about sustainability. We care deeply, we care deeply about it. I know mm. that our employees, our fellow Amazonians do, Mm. Um, so with the Climate Pledge, um, we're working together in collaboration with others to really help us get to that to net zero goal by 2040. So is, is net zero the, the main objective of sustainability or does it encompass more, uh, encompasses more, more, more and, and anything beyond that? Uh, that's a really great point, Bernard. Um, yes, it's climate, it's greenhouse gas emissions, right? It's decarbonizing our business. Um, but it includes other aspects. Um, for example, um, we have a program called Shipment Zero, uh, and Shipment, Shipment Zero has an aspiration to be to have 50% of our shipments net zero by 2030. That's quite an ambitious target, right? For a company of our size and shape, and you know, and, and profile, and you know, it's fast growing and what have you. Um, but that includes things like packaging, right? Really, just thinking differently about how we design. Packaging. Um, packaging is often a, a topic that's very close to people's hearts mm. um, when it comes to sustainability. So really thinking about, you know, how we design it, how we choose the right type of packaging to, you know, protect and deliver the product to our customers. Um, and in fact, we have um, uh, we're using things like machine learning algorithms to help um, our pickers select the right packaging for the products that are being chosen. So taking some of that sort of complexity out of that, you know, that sort of that task by using things like machine learning in the cloud. And um, so to your point, it can include many other aspects of sustainability. 
Very good. And I, I guess for Amazon Web Services specifically, I think that there are two sides to it. There's your own, there are your own sustainability goals, and then there are the things that you do for your customers to help them become more sustainable. So it might be worth looking at both of those angles. Um, in in terms of, and when it comes to cloud computing, I think sometimes people feel that this is doesn't really is not really real because I, I think if a company looks at their own carbon footprint, for example, they simply outsource some of their computing to the cloud, and then that means that 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 they have improved their own carbon footprint. I think they have to realize that there's still a, a massive uh, data center somewhere that consumes lots of energy that needs to be managed well. So. Maybe you can give us some examples of some of the things or some of the innovations you've brought in uh, to make your own operations more sustainable within AWS. Okay, um, good question. And, and look, just commenting on that, we, we hear all the time that sustainability is difficult um, and it is difficult, right? It's one thing to you know declare a, a goal or an ambition all right, but it's another thing to actually put, you know, the right investments and the processes in place. So one of the ways in which we, you know, we wish to help our customers is to really simplify, right, as much as we can, some of the complexities of sustainability. And that often comes from data. Data is a very tough challenge. You can't, you know, in, make investment and business decisions based on poor and scrappy data. So how do, you know, cloud technologies, you know, software solutions, um, really help our customers make the right decisions around it. Um, and that applies to us, right? We made some very significant commitments to renewable energy um, right across our organization and the renewable energy that powers our data centers. Um, the greenest energy you can, you know, that you have is the energy you don't use. So as you can imagine, our data center operations are, are you know, are run in a way that is being, you know, to be as efficient as possible to ensure that we're running at the highest levels of utilization that we're bringing in, um, you know, innovative technology, such as things like really taking a fresh look at UPS battery power supplies, right? So moving away from sort of big diesel generator, you know, type um, standby power generation and looking at distributed battery type, you know, next, you know, next to, next to server type um, UPS systems, mm. all of those types of things add up. Right, so all of that efficiency, all of those high levels of utilization, working with the local um, providers, local communities and authorities to bring renewable energy online, right, all behind that climate pledge ambition. And for our customers, um, you know, what is, what is the enabling capabilities of technology? Um, smart algorithms, for example, helping Qantas um, improve their route optimization to save them fuel and time and money right by using algorithms to do you know really sort of strategic route planning as one example there are many more ways in which we we get involved and help our customers um, improve sustain and sustainability performance but also look at the opportunity that this transition presents yeah that's interesting so it's not just simply they're outsourcing their computing capabilities to someone that has more efficient and greener operations but you look beyond this and say actually by applying things like ai and machine learning and making their data work for them it helps them to achieve sustain their own sustainability goals beyond just their their their, their cloud effectiveness right yeah yeah, I, I look, I'm, I'm Bernard, I know, you know, we, we had a chat earlier and you said you're passionate about the topic. Mm. Um, I think we are going to, you know, address these issues by working together. The sort of, you know, collaborating, you know, within industries and across industries. Um, but we do need a technology platforms to play their role, mm. right? To connect these systems, connect manufacturing supply chains, connect um, brands and companies with their consumers and their customers close the loop on waste, you know, head to, to net zero. This is a wonderful opportunity for technology um, in all its guises to help enable that transition. Um, and it might be interesting for your audience to know that, you know, we we have a, a number of ways in which we can engage. And one of the things we do is, is we take our Amazon's own innovation methodology. Um, we call it working backwards. Um, we work backwards from the customer to invent on their behalf. But we do that with customers. We do that with other organizations to help them create new products and services 
that better serve their customers. Very good. So what are some of your favorite examples of, of customers that, that, that you've helped to, to achieve sustainability, got their own sustainability goals? Um, I'm going to be a little bit, I'm just going to talk about data. It, it, it's the reoccurring theme <laughs> within, within our, within our customer base. Um, so we worked with a retailer. I can't name the name of the retailer. I'm sorry, but, uh, a retailer in the UK just to put a better data platform system in place to capture scope one and two emissions and get that in place. And by doing so provide the decision makers within, uh, within the company to make better investment decisions. Um, and then that naturally takes you into the world of scope three. Um, so I think this world of scope three, for those of you not familiar, scope three emissions are the emissions that, um, that are generally generated in your supply chain or in your value chain, not directly associated with your organization. Um, and things like science-based targets and other stakeholder pressures and pending regulation means that you're going to have to start counting that, right? And disclosing that. Mm. So it's an important measure to, to understand, mm. but it's tremendously complicated, right? Especially when you start dealing with tens, hundreds, thousands of suppliers. Um, so, so definitely that's the trend that we're on. So we're, we're, we're working with all types of companies on that sort of scope three area. Very good. And it, when, when you look at your own sustainability, your own sustainability journey, you're moving towards net zero. How, how, how are you progressing on, on that journey? Have you got any, any quantifiable information? How, how do you feel all of, all of this is going? Uh, well, um, I think well, that, it's good. There's a lot of news and a lot of announcements. Um, we have a 2030 target for. Um, powering our business. That's Amazon, 100% on renewable energy. We're on track for 2025. Um, we've made a few announcements recently of um, some additional um, renewable energy projects, uh, most of them uh, utility scale projects. So we're, you know, we're arranging power purchase agreements and what have you. So the good news is we have new projects in Spain, a um, couple of solar farm on-site solar projects. Um, we have projects in Scotland coming online, um, continuing to um, uh, have projects um, across across the world and the US. Um, in, in a nutshell, we have 8.5 gigawatts of renewable energy um, under contract. Um, that makes us the biggest global buyer of renewable energy Uh, there is, and in fact, even in Europe, um, we're 2.5 gigawatts of energy, uh, renewable energy in Europe. So the biggest provider, buyer of renewable energy. Um, but as I mentioned before, the greenest energy is the energy you don't use. So efficiency measures every step of the way. Um, we love to develop these kind of growth flywheels within our companies. So once we start doing something, we seek to get better and better at it. So definitely the case with energy efficiency, using technology, you know, where we can, you know, such as the, you know, the, um, the power supply example, mm -hmm. um, and, and being inventive, inventing on behalf of our customers. We also announced um, last year um, the commitment to buy 100,000 electric vans um, with this company called Rivian, 100,000 vehicles. Um, I think that's a great move, um, mm -hmm. you know, to, to um, electrify, you know, um, logistics and delivery. But it's also a signal to the market. We want others to follow, you know, on this pathway. Mm. Look, we know we're not alone. There is some fantastic innovation out there and companies are really stepping up. Um, but, you know, we're doing our bit. The, the, the investments, the commitments we make, hopefully provide confidence to the industries that the sectors that we operate in. So we see more of that transition happening. Yeah, that's great to hear. And I, I don't think there, there are many ambitions that companies need to focus on that are more important than than sustainability at, at this point in time so what what would you say are some of the key barriers or key enablers that you have seen or that you if anyone listen to this and think oh, we we need to be make our company more sustainable how do we how do we do this how do we approach this what what do we need to avoid what we need to focus on what are the levers what are the barriers uh again that's a really good question um without being a broken record certainly a data strategy or a data integration strategy um it's it's really important to have a, an idea of you know where you stand today your baseline and and what have you um and and take the time to understand what you're 
company strengths are. What are you good at, right, as a business? And what is most appropriate for the long-term prosperity of your business? So yes, you know, do the work to lighten your footprint, you know, be more sustainable in your operations, the way you engage and mo motivate your employees. But what is your net zero carbon business opportunity? Mm -hmm. that, is, that is a real thing, right? We're not going to get there if we all act, you know, in silos on our own. It's this bigger market opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I think really think strategically about what your business will look like in three to five years time right from a sort of you know policy regime from a sort of you know business regime from what your customers require um, and double down on that right that is very much that should be very much part of your sustainability strategy um, and i think we're also starting to see early indications of the opportunity to shape your businesses in a sustainable way um, in purely by just in the process of, of accessing funding um, we're seeing examples of where there are preferable um, funding regimes out there through impact funds and, you know, the big financial institutions looking to lend to companies that they know are getting ready for the future. Mm. So this could, it can have a very real financial return on, you know, in the, in the near term, in terms mm. of the shape of your business, let alone the brand and the talent and the, you know, the growth opportunities through products and services. Very good. And looking ahead, what's what's on the horizon? What are some of your hopes or predictions for the future? What are some of the things that that you want to work on? What what do you, how do you see the sustainability agenda evolving? Oh my gosh, um, uh, my my dream is that sustainability is BAU. It's business as usual yeah. right? for for any business. And maybe you know the sustainability department doesn't exist anymore. Maybe that's a Bit of a controversial statement, but I think, um, uh, yeah, it, it's a, it's an automated, embedded process um, within the companies that we work for. We can concentrate on design, innovation, and serving our customers, and all those types of things. But I think with cloud and digital technologies, um, we have a tremendous opportunity to make this a much simpler process, um, a more dynamic process for you know, companies and societies and other organizations um, to hopefully put things like climate change and the threat of climate change in the, in the rear view window. Very good. I, I share your dream. That's a very, I, and I, I think you're absolutely right. Once, once we don't need sustainability departments anymore because it has become just core of everything we do, that will be a, a massive achievement. So thank you so much, Neil. Thank you for joining, joining me today. Pleasure. Thank you, Bernard.